Welcome to this step-by-step -step Audacity tutorial for beginners. If you want to use Audacity for any purposes you see on screen, this video is for you. This is a detailed tutorial to help you get started with Audacity smoothly. You may need to watch this tutorial a couple of times to understand and execute everything properly. We will mainly learn four things for this Audacity tutorial. How do you record your voice properly with Audacity? How to edit that recording, editing means navigating through the recording to remove unwanted parts or add missing parts. How to process a recording for better sound. Editing and processing are separate things. No matter how good your recording equipment is, you will always need to process the recording with some audio effects for great quality audio. We will learn that. Lastly, we will learn how to obtain an audio file from that recording. You will need an audio file for different projects or platforms. Audio files are MP3 or WAV files. You will not obtain such a file just by recording in Audacity, we will learn how to obtain it. I am using Audacity 3.7.1 for this tutorial series, which will also work for Audacity 3.6. This video was made using the latest version. However, if you're using Audacity 3.5.1 or older, a link to another video is included in the description. Let's start with recording. There are various reasons you might need to record your voice, and I've listed some common purposes. This tutorial will guide you through the process no matter your goal. Recording in Audacity is quite simple. Press the red record button, and the recording begins. As I click the record button, you'll see the waveform of the audio being captured. This waveform represents your recording, and later, you'll edit and process it. In essence, audio editing revolves around modifying and enhancing this waveform. However, simply pressing the record button isn't enough to ensure a good recording. Before recording, it's important to check that all your settings are properly configured. If you don't set up the options correctly, the recording quality will suffer. If you take away just one thing from this tutorial, let it be this, there is no substitute for a good quality recording. Achieving the best possible recording quality in your setup is crucial because the final audio's quality is directly tied to the recording itself. A high-quality recording not only results in better final audio but also makes the editing process much easier. If you're new to this, remember, a good recording equals good final audio. On the flip side, a poor recording will lead to poor final audio, no matter how much processing you apply or how expensive your software is. So, what settings should you configure to ensure a proper recording? There are several, and you'll see them listed on the screen. While it may look like a lot, don't worry, we'll go through each step by step. I'll dismiss this current recording since it wasn't set up with the ideal configuration. The first thing we'll do is select the microphone for recording. To begin, click on the audio setup button to access configuration options. Here, you can set up your recording device, which shows all the microphones connected to your computer. You may notice some unfamiliar names on the list, these are virtual microphones from other software on your computer. What matters is that your desired microphone appears on the list and is selected. The currently selected microphone will have a check mark beside it. In this example, the MacBook Pro microphone is selected. If I were to record now, the MacBook Pro microphone would be used. To select a different microphone, just click on its name. For instance, if I want to use my Samson C01U mic, I would click on its name, and it would become the selected device for recording. You can confirm that the Samson mic is now selected because the check mark will appear next to it in the recording device list. It's important to know what name your microphone appears under, as different models may display different names. For example, my Samson USB mic is labeled as Samson C01U Pro mic. However, I also have a Sennheiser mic connected to my computer, but its name isn't showing up. This issue can happen if you plug in the microphone after Audacity is already open. If this happens to you, there's a simple fix. You'll see an option labeled Rescan Audio Devices. By clicking Rescan, Audacity will refresh the list of connected microphones. After rescanning, I'll check the Audio Setup button again to see if my devices have updated. Now, you can see a new device called Scarlett 2i2 USB has appeared. Scarlett is my audio interface, and my Sennheiser microphone is connected through it. The device shows the name of the interface, not the microphone itself. By selecting Scarlett 2i2 USB, I'll be using my Sennheiser mic for recording. I'll click on Scarlett 2i2 USB to select it for recording, and I can verify it's selected by checking the audio setup button. Keep in mind, when the microphone is connected to an audio interface, the audio interface name will be shown in the list instead of microphone name. If you're a beginner, I recommend using the device toolbar to double check which microphone is selected. There's a good reason for this, and I'll explain it shortly. To access the device toolbar, go to View Toolbars. The toolbars currently displayed will have check marks next to them. 
Since the device toolbar doesn't have a check mark, it's not visible right now. I'll click on it to make it appear. Now that the device toolbar is visible, you can always check which microphone is currently selected for recording. The device toolbar is one of the most useful toolbars in Audacity, but it's not shown by default. To prevent using the wrong microphone for recording, always enable it from the menu. This way, you can easily see which microphone you're using during your recording session. It's easy to forget to select the correct microphone, I've seen many clients make this mistake. Imagine finishing a long recording, only to find out you used the wrong mic. That's why I always recommend showing the device toolbar to avoid this frustration. If you're aiming to build long-term skills in audio recording and editing, consider joining my mailing list. I regularly share audio tutorials through the mailing list that will help you gain a deeper understanding of the audio editing process. You'll find a link to subscribe in the description. For those who want to master Audacity for professional voiceover work or audiobook narration, I offer a comprehensive Audacity bundle. If improving the quality of your voice recordings is your goal, this bundle is an ideal solution. The Audacity bundle includes several courses and sound better tools. The courses cover both older versions of Audacity and the latest 3.6 and 3.7 releases. In fact, I provide separate courses for different versions, all accessible through the bundle. The bundle also includes one-click macros designed to enhance your voice quickly and efficiently, saving you valuable time. You'll find the link to the bundle in the description, where you can explore all the details. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out via email, which is also listed in the description. Many people have successfully produced audiobooks and landed voiceover jobs after completing the courses in the bundle. I highly recommend checking it out. The proper microphone is now selected for recording, but don't press the record button yet. You have to choose the correct recording channel. In the device toolbar, the drop-down next to the microphone is where you select the recording channel. You can see two options, mono and stereo. If you're using a USB microphone, you might only see the mono option. If you're using an audio mixer, you might see more than two channels. Make sure to select the mono channel. For me, the mono channel is selected as the checkmark appears next to it. I'm showing this setting in the device toolbar, but you can also find it in the audio setup button. In Audacity, the same action can be performed from multiple places. You can set it from any of them. For voiceovers, mono works perfectly. For music recording, you might want to select stereo. A stereo channel lets you apply different effects to the left and right sides of your headphones. However, this isn't needed for voice recording. Mono keeps things simple. If you choose stereo, you may need to configure it properly. Otherwise, the sound might only come through one side of your headphones. To avoid these issues, stick to mono. It's easier to use, and there is no effect on the recording quality whether you choose mono or stereo. Now that we've selected both the microphone and recording channel, it's time to check the audio settings. While the default settings are generally okay, they do need some attention to make sure your recording sounds its best. Check the audio settings to ensure the sample rate and sample format are correct. The sample rate should be 44.1 kHz, and the sample format should be 32-bit float. That is also the default settings in Audacity, and if you have the same settings, you don't need to do anything here. If the values are different, change them to 44.1 kHz and 32-bit float. This will give you the best recording quality. You don't have to set the audio settings every time you record. Once you set it, the settings will stay that way unless you change it. We will now see how to set the playback device. The playback device is not important during recording, unless you enable live monitoring. In the device toolbar, it is the last drop-down with the speaker icon. When you play your audio after recording, you will hear your audio through this device. You can also set this using the audio setup button. In the audio setup button, there is an option to select a playback device. If you are using live monitoring, you will listen through this device during recording. I do not usually use live monitoring, so it is not strictly necessary for me to set it before recording. I could set it before I listen to the audio. However, if you use live monitoring or multi-track listening, it is important to set it correctly. For live monitoring, you have to enable it. Go to the transport menu, and you will see transport options. There is an option to enable audible input monitoring. There is no tick mark before it, which means it is not enabled for me. I do not use live monitoring, so I haven't enabled this. If you want live monitoring, you have to click Enable Audible Input Monitoring. We are now ready for the recording. However, there is another thing you need to be aware of during recording, the recording level or the input level. Beginners often do it wrong, and it has a big impact on the final audio processing. To assist you in setting the level, Audacity has two meters, the top one is the recording meter, and the bottom one is the playback meter. 
you can drag the meters to make them bigger and reposition them if you want. A bigger meter makes it easier to read the levels. You can see the meter reading during recording and playback. Before you start recording, it is good to check the level. There is also a slider in the meter to adjust the gain from Audacity. If your level is too high, you can decrease the slider to adjust the level. I usually keep the slider to 100% and adjust the gain from the audio interface. Some microphone also has a gain knob. If you double-click the slider icon, a pop-up will appear with a more visible slider. So the main question is, what is the correct level we should aim for? To check the input level before you start recording, click on the small microphone icon. Click Enable Silent Monitoring. When you enable silent monitoring, you can see the current input level in the meter. Talk to the microphone the way you will talk in the recording. Observe the meter and avoid entering the red zone. If you cross minus 3 dB in the meter, you will be in the red zone. So, what is the problem in the red zone? If you record in the red zone, the audio may become clipped or distorted. Distorted audio never sounds good, and there is almost nothing you can do to fix it or make it sound normal. You should aim not to cross minus 6 dB during recording. You should also check if the recording level is not too low. For example, if your audio never crosses minus 24, then it has a very low recording level. Your first priority would be to talk from a proper distance to the microphone. If you record from proper distance to the microphone, you will most likely get the best recording, even if your recording level is not optimal. But if you can make sure the levels are okay, there will be less headache after processing. Please note you do not have to be very precise about these numbers. These are more of a guideline to achieve a good signal level that is not too hot. A hot signal means when you are hitting the red zone in the meter. You can stop monitoring by clicking Disable Silent Monitoring. Once you've set everything up, press record and start your session. Welcome to this step-by-step -step Audacity tutorial for beginners. I am using Audacity 3.6.4 for this tutorial series. It was the latest version when this video was made. Please note that this is a very detailed tutorial to get you started with Audacity smoothly. You are watching the first part of this video on how to get started with voice recording. And then After recording, the first thing you should do is save your project. This ensures that if Audacity crashes or your computer shuts down, your work is safe. Saving creates an AUP3 file, which is unique to Audacity and can only be opened within the software. It's different from exporting audio files, which you'll need to do if you want to send the audio somewhere or use it on another platform. To save your project, go to File a Save Project. You'll be prompted to choose a location on your computer. Audacity also has a cloud save option, but for now, let's focus on saving locally. If you don't want to see this option every time, check the box to remember your choice. I'll click Save to Computer and select a location to save the project. The file will be an Audacity project with an .op3 extension. I'll choose a save location without going into the details of the selection process. Next, name your project and click Save. This will allow you to reopen the project later and resume work from your last save point. Note that the Audacity project is saved as an OP3 file, which can only be opened in Audacity. The project is saved, and you can see the project name here. I'll navigate to the location where I saved the Audacity file. You can see the Audacity project. Alongside the .op3 file, there are two additional supporting files. These are temporary files generated because the project is currently open in Audacity. If I close Audacity, these extra files will disappear. After closing Audacity, only the .op3 file remains. You can open the project by double-clicking the .op3 file, which will restore the recording. To play the audio from any point on the timeline, click at the desired spot and press the spacebar, or use the play button. Welcome to this step-by-step -step Audacity tutorial for beginners. I am using Audacity. You might notice the audio sounds quieter than the current narration. This is where post-processing comes in. The next step is post-processing, which will help improve the sound quality. This will be covered in detail in the next part of the tutorial, and you can find the link in the description. So what do we need for a top quality recording? Before recording, set the correct microphone. The device toolbar always shows the selected microphone, so I recommend enabling it. Set your recording channel to mono for voiceovers. Use a 44.1 kHz sample rate and 32-bit float sample format for the best recording quality. Monitor your recording level to stay within the ideal range and avoid distortion. Save your project immediately after recording to avoid data loss. 
If you're new to audio recording, keep in mind that simply recording your voice isn't enough to achieve high-quality audio. Post-processing is essential to make your recording sound professional. This is where audio editing software, like Audacity excels. If you're aiming to build long-term skills in audio recording and editing, consider joining my mailing list. I regularly share audio tutorials through the mailing list that will help you gain a deeper understanding of the audio editing process. You'll find a link to subscribe in the description. For those who want to master Audacity for professional voiceover work or audiobook narration, I offer a comprehensive Audacity bundle. If improving the quality of your voice recordings is your goal, this bundle is an ideal solution. The Audacity bundle includes several courses and sound better tools. The courses cover both older versions of Audacity and the latest 3.6 and 3.7 releases. In fact, I provide separate courses for different versions, all accessible through the bundle. The bundle also includes one-click macros designed to enhance your voice quickly and efficiently, saving you valuable time. You'll find the link to the bundle in the description, where you can explore all the details. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out via email, which is also listed in the description. Many people have successfully produced audiobooks and landed voiceover jobs after completing the courses in the bundle. I highly recommend checking it out.